Well, good day everyone uh, and welcome back. As you can see on the old Sheldon, uh, I've got the tailstock all done. I've got the steady rest all done. Uh, we will take a closer look at these on the bench here in a little while. And then uh, before we tackle uh, the apron, I wanted to go ahead and show you some things that I, I found out. Okay, so continuing on in our uh, Sheldon rebuild journey, um, a couple things I'll bring you up to date on. I have not taken the motor out yet. That, uh, If you remember in our walk around, we had that little thin cord up here, and that was really bugging me. So what I ended up doing, just to rule out that it was a, a cord issue, is I replaced that cord with a, with a, with a, heavier, uh, a heavier gauge cord cord and then those belts were in such poor shape if by chance this did fire up those belts weren't weren't going to stay intact for very long so I went ahead and replaced the belts on it um, that that's a little bit uh, that's a little bit of a chore in that in order to do this correct there's some videos out there that will tell you how to do it by driving the spindle out of the bearings that is incorrect the way you change belts on this is you actually remove the spindle um, from the headstock and slide it out of the belts and then remove the belts through the bottom that way you don't run the risk of driving all these keyed uh, these keyed chan you know this there's a key here well that might be the only one I can't remember um, but there, there's a key on on this gear and when you drive that through you're you're, you're gonna nick your bearings and then they're, then they're junk so the way to do this is to completely remove the spindle the only big thing you got to worry about is you'll have uh, shims or laminated shim stock in between the headstock and the bearing caps that's what keeps the spindle in alignment and uh, just when you take these apart be careful don't lose that shim stock and, and uh, remember where it came from uh, outside of that and it's not really that big of a deal and we'll go into that uh, again when uh, we tear down the headstock so uh, but what that allowed me to do is then I could uh, safely see if this thing will fire up and it does uh, good news is I got it running bad news is still need a motor um, the drive gears just so we can hear it run everything there sounds really good really nice and quiet um, we do have a broken gear a broken tooth on our back gear and so I'll show you what that sounds like as we pull the pull this pin and then we can engage the back gear and that's that gear that little bump bump that's that's what that noise is is that one tooth that's missing so we're gonna get that fixed then what we can do is we can go ahead and check our forward and reverse gears and see what that sounds like. Uh, so we'll go ahead and drop it down into reverse. And all that means is, is the lead screw is running in reverse. So if I were to use, uh, if I were to engage the power feed, it would move away from the headstock. And you can hear there's quite a bit of noise. So we got some stuff that needs attention in there. We'll go ahead and engage the forward. And we have just as much noise there. So we got a common issue going on in our forward and reverse gears. And then um, we'll go through all our, our threading it, it, it's gonna need a lot of work I'll tell you that 
uh, right now. We'll get this cranked in a little bit, and you can see, you can see on our cross slide, we have many tens of thousands of backlash in our dials. That's that's not very good, but that's an easy fix, really. That's hopefully all that is is that brass nut. And then this is actually really good. Not, not a whole heck of a lot of backlash there, even, let's put it in neutral, it's in gear right now. Got a little bit. But again, you'll have, you'll have a, so you'll have a, there's a brass nut here on this lead screw and then you'll have the same and then then you have gears and half nut gears down here we'll get in you'll see all that here in a little bit probably um, but there's there's some in there it's not not too bad everything is so sticky and stiff got a little bit in the clutch So that's that's how that's the best way to check that actually is you engage the clutch and then try to move it and you can see these old machines didn't have dials down here but that's probably twenty thousandths and there's some up and down play in that handle which I'm not too worried about a lot of times it can be just that bushing in there that's wore out um, but let me go ahead and we'll put this cover back on and we'll see how see how just for giggles we'll see it we'll, we'll make some cuts on it and see what it does okay so we're going to do some manual and then we'll do uh, and then we'll try some with the power feed uh, and see if that noise stays consistent or if it gets worse when it's under a load let her idle up and again, I didn't even, I didn't, I haven't done anything with this cutter. So you can see that it's just, it's what was in the machine. It's all rusty and nasty and it'll probably, we'll probably get some chatter and everything, but we'll see. I have no way to read. Uh, you know, I can kind of tell what we got. That should be about 10 thousandths. And this is stainless steel that we're turning so pretty tough stuff let's go ahead and deburr that before I take it out see how we did really pretty good finish this is the part we just turned right up to this shoulder right here um, really really uh, fairly really for an old cutter that probably needs to be touched up um, it did good at ten thousandths and I don't know how this machine reads um, lays are different some machines if you uh, if you set it for a thou, it takes a thou. Some machines, if you set it for a thou, it takes two thou. We'll get into that later. Uh, right now, I'm just checking to see how it did on the cut. There are 422 and 5 uh, ten thousandths, top and bottom on that shoulder. So that's not too bad. I realize it's not far, you know, it's not really a good way to judge that, but it ain't. That's not too bad. Now we'll go ahead and see what she'll do with the power feed. So again, we'll get it fired up. I'm going to clean that up real quick. Just manually.
There's a bad spot in that cutter, but for what we're doing, we're all right. I'll go ahead and touch off about 15 thousandths, engage our clutch. That's plenty, plenty good. We'll get this little chip out of the way. Don't ever remove those with your bare hands. We'll deburr our part. And all I'm doing, And all I'm doing by doing this is is I just I want to hear different things under a load and see if they get worse or get consistent. That seemed to stay pretty consistent. We didn't get any new noises. So hopefully uh, everything's contained right into the, the forward and reverse gears. Um, and you can see where this has been crashed before. So that's that's where the damage is going to occur. But uh, again, that power feed works real nice. There's our finish. Really nice, even on an old junk uh, piece of high, high speed steel. So again, just doing that little operation really uh, told us a lot about the machine. Um, we got some sticky issues going on in here and probably uh, a worn out uh, or worn uh, Worn, worn gears here, but we'll see how bad bad is when we get into that. And we definitely know that um, we got something going on in the forward and reverse gear. Hopefully that's uh, contained to the uh, forward and reverse, the, the, it's what they call the banjo assembly. Um, and you'll see all that when we get to it, but it was glad to see it run still going to need a motor um, but it's it'll be all right so that being said what we'll do is we'll head over to the bench i'll show you the tailstock and the uh, steady rest and then we'll come back to the lathe and get the uh, saddle and the uh, apron and probably the lead screw off the machine and uh, we'll see what kind of time that takes that might be it today if we have more time then we'll go ahead and start tearing all that down okay so we're over at the bench and you can see this is the uh, the wrench to tighten down uh, both the hail the tailstock and the steady rest this is um, for the for the tailstock and this is what we're going to have to make for the uh, steady rest this everything on here and this has actually been broke and brazed back together you can see where that's been brazed back together this is not a critical part so that's a perfectly acceptable repair um, it is cast but we'll, we'll probably we you know we got to make one we might we may just make both of them um, so when it comes to uh, disassembly of the steady rest, it's it's really uh, pretty pretty straightforward. Um, you you just you can unscrew all the all these nuts which free up these fingers, and uh, they'll they'll pop right out. If if not, soak them soak them in some PB blaster or, or some form of penetrating oil, and they'll they'll come right out. And then the adjustment screws will same thing there those just back out uh, the hardest part about this is these two pins um, you, do, you have to drive those out and, and you separate the bottom and the top half um, on all my bare metal parts like these screws here and this bolt and these fingers these pins those all went in the um, in uh, evapo rust uh, which is this stuff right here and this stuff works awesome 
It's uh, non-toxic. You, 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 uh, of course, you should wear gloves, but you don't have to. And uh, I just keep a five-gallon pail of it in the shop, and I add when I need to. Um, but, yep, you just throw it in there for an hour or two, sometimes overnight. And this is, I mean, you remember how rusted up this spindle was in the tailstock. And uh, that's no nothing. That's just going into the evapo rust uh, for about two and a half hours and, and taking it out. And then for um, everything else, I try not to use the evapo rust on machine surfaces. You can, but I really try to avoid that uh, where possible. And uh, so pretty much what I use after that uh, to remove all that old paint. And, and primer is this uh, Jasco Premium Paint and Epoxy Remover. Uh, this you do need to use in a well ventilated area. It is strong stuff and it works. Peeled that stuff right down to bare metal. Um, and, and you'll see that, you'll see this stuff in action here pretty quick. Um, these parts are pretty straightforward so I didn't think I needed to go into detail on that. The big thing is is when you're refinishing these parts all your machine surfaces like the area underneath I think those are in there pretty snug yeah but the area under here um, you, you tape off uh, you don't your rule of thumb when restoring equipment is don't paint machine surfaces so if it's a critical area don't paint it you'll see where we ride on the bed it's nice and clean and I think if you remember that was very rust saturated um, same thing on these channels same thing on the pin same thing on the pivot area and on these faces um, same thing over here I didn't paint over the bushing and I didn't paint this area because it's going to chip off anyway as far as uh, tailstock disassembly um, that that is really really easy you can unscrew the, the handle and again um, that went right in the evapo rust uh, I sprayed it down and then you can just wind in most cases you just wind the spindle out like so I did hone the bore of this a little bit with a very, very, very fine uh, cylinder hone. And then you'll pull these two screws. This is your adjustment to, to, to uh, get your tailstock centered with your headstock so you're not cutting on a taper. And from there, this hasn't been adjusted, but there's, that's it. This didn't have a gib or anything. Um, and again, I didn't do anything with any of these machine surfaces. Sometimes there's a gib in here that you need to drive out. This doesn't have that. And the way that works is these just press here. So you loosen one and tighten one and it moves everything one way or the other until you're in alignment. And there is, you couldn't even see that before, but this is your scale. This would be your center mark, or thereabouts. And then there's a little tick mark right there on the tailstock. And don't, don't be alarmed if that's not in the center. Because if you, you know, this, it, it needs to be, that scale is centered to this, which is all referenced off center line of the spindle. Um, And then from there, you have this little Allen screw here. You can pop out. And that there's a collar that sits down in and locks our uh, worm screw in place. And then from there, we have this little nut on the back we need to remove. That's on there pretty good.
And then you can take a rubber mallet, soft jawed mallet, or like I'm using the back of a rubber handled screwdriver, handle comes off. Be careful you don't lose this little key. And then all of that will come right out the front. Just like that. And again, this was all cleaned up in the evapo rust. And then I just um, put some oil on it. And uh, reassembled it. See how it felt. Made sure it wasn't uh, more loose than it was when it came apart. But what's really cool about these old parts is you'll see I have a center a center hole here and I have a center hole here. That tells me this was made on centers. Wouldn't, wouldn't probably be that way these days. And then to put it back together it's, it's just the opposite of the way it came apart. You want to take a little bit of non-detergent oil and just oil all your surfaces just a little bit and the reason I say non-detergent is detergent oils are designed to hold contaminants in suspension and we really don't want that just feed that through When you go ahead and install your spindle, there is a keyway in the bottom of this tailstock that aligns with this shaft. So make sure that stays lined up. Just get that started a little bit. There we go. Install our keyway. Install our set screw. And then on your handle, there's that notch for the keyway. So just get that lined up. Again, you can use a, a soft face mallet. I'm just using the back end of a rubber rubber handled screwdriver washer our nut I love these old nuts and just how they finished them Now I need to kill it. Just nice. I don't want it to like if I put it here, I don't want it to fall down or there. It should stay wherever you need it to stay. That's our spindle lock and that works. I'm going to go ahead and get a little drop of oil down in there, down in our git. Just work that back and forth. set that back on our plate and that's how these screws work is this is what sets your taper uh, you just offset the tailstock using a center and that's that's how they used to cut tapers before they had taper attachments um, I'm not really going to be worried about lining this up at this time obviously because we have to pull the headstock apart so I'm just going to kind of get it close to middle it's not critical right now just I don't want it falling apart when I pick it up and move it. So 
So the way that works is if I back this one out, that allows me to pull this forward. And then if I back that in and back this one out, that allows me to pull it rearward. Right now I just want them buttoned down so it doesn't fall apart when we pick it up. Anyway, that's it with that, guys. The tailstock's pretty uh, straightforward uh, disassembly. You don't really, unless this is real bad, you don't really need to worry about the um, this bushing. And if you need to replace this oil git, you can uh, just drive drive that out. You pull the spindle out and either run a, what I do is I'll run a tap down through it and just pull it out um, and then you can replace them. These, these were in really good shape so I didn't I didn't uh, feel the urge that I needed to mess with that so that, that was real good. Um, so now we'll go over there and talk about the uh, lead screw, the saddle, and the apron. So what we're going to do first is we're going to remove the lead screw and what's nice on this lathe is we have a shear pin right here so we don't have to take the whole gearbox part or anything like that we're just going to drive this shear pin out and then unbolt it from the other end and see if we can't fish that right out of the bed that way I can uh, measure the wear on our lead screw and then we'll attack um, attack our uh, apron so don't tell my punch this isn't a gun if you come across a lathe like this just make sure you're driving it out from the right end you see it's a tapered pin one small end one fat end and then you'll see right here we have an oil git and then this screw so we'll just undo this bearing on a south bend if you don't have a nut there you'll see screws on the top you'll have to remove those screws this isn't made that way pry that off like so probably a little gentler than that but you'll have a little guide pin you'll notice our bolt and then we have this little guide pin that lines everything up and uh, if this really had a ton of play you can ream this out and press fit a bronze or brass bushing in there and it would be fine there wasn't any play in here uh, so it's it's pretty not enough to worry about so it's it's pretty good and all these parts will go uh, right in the parts washer and then from the parts washer to uh, the evapo rust and then lead screw removal hopefully we can put this in neutral that's unlocked and we should be able to slide that right out we got to a point where it jammed okay so rather than fight the system what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, just get some blocking under this and we'll drop the apron from the saddle and if these are real tough which they are what we're going to do is just get these cleaned out dirt and grime out of there and they're in there pretty good so we will get our handy dandy impact driver and the way this works is just a flathead uh, they're interchangeable bits you can go forward or backwards you stick it down in that hole and stick it down in your screw or whatever it is that you're trying to break free and, and you use a, a hammer and the theory is it's the vibration that vibration will break the threads free which it did We'll give this one a try. Oh yeah.
pretty pretty dry in there. And we can remove some of our blocking and that'll come right down. And you'll see we have a nice mud dauber nest and uh, all kinds of neat stuff. So let's go over to the bench. And uh, well, what we'll do is I'll set this on the bench and then we'll go over and we'll get the saddle off. We'll come back, get the saddle off and uh, see what we got. So typically um, from this point, all you would really have to do to remove the saddle is you could just slide it off the end of the bed. Um, but you'll notice this is set up against the wall in between two machines. Uh, there's a reason for that. I'll show you that a little bit later. Um, so we don't have that option and it's really not that big of a deal. What there is is there's a plate on the back side that locks the saddle down on the bed. So we're going to remove that plate. But before we do that we're going to remove our, uh, our, cross, our, our threading dial. And that just unbolts just like that. We'll set him on the bench. And then, I don't know how many we have back here, but it should be two. This is a pretty small saddle. Some will have more. Oops, got three. That's the locking plate. You can see there's all kinds of crud in there. I'm going to go set this on the bench. And then there should be a little locking tab right here. Feels like it's just a nut. Nut and a couple washers in that tab. And it is. That has a little indexing pin to get everything squared up. And so from there we should be able to just lift this right off like so. Okay, so here's our here's our uh, apron from the back side. Here's our little mud dauber nest. And the reason this won't come out is it's just so packed with grease it just gets bound up. Okay, and so what I ended up doing to get this freed up is I turned it over to Bubba, the shop cat, and, and he got it figured out for me. Uh, no, seriously, um, what I ended up doing is this was so coated with just grease and grime and caked on chips. I just saturated it with uh, WD-40, let it sit for a little while, and, and uh, um, it'll probably slide right out now. Uh, just wiped it down and, and um, you know, that WD-40 in most cases makes a much better solvent than it does uh, lubricant. It just slides right out and then we can take our little drive gear out and this is keyed so when you put this back together make sure that this is lined up with this keyway um, and so I think as far as the apron goes I think that's as far as we're going to go today this will probably um, this whole monstrosity will probably be its own own video. There's just <clears throat> there's there's a lot to these, um, and it's got a lot of just junk in there. So what I'm going to do is this is just going to go in the parts washer and soak and try to clean a lot of this grime off. I think that'll help uh, the disassembly process and keep me a little cleaner. Um, so we'll move this aside and we'll, we'll uh, turn our attention to the saddle. Okay, uh, so on this we're going to kind of work 
uh, from top to bottom, starting with the tool post. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. I hope there's there's a uh, you know this can kind of differ from lathe to lathe, and we'll take a look at it here and there and um, see how it goes. But this little guy can come out. This is the carriage lock. This uh, is a more modern bolt. This is not original to the lathe. And then we'll start with our tool post so we can loosen the tool post up. Slide this out. And take our little wrench. Slide that piece of uh, high speed steel cutter out. Take our bolts out. That's actually uh, cracked off. That's interesting. I don't know if you can see that right there. So we can make one of these if we have to. Then the tool tool holder comes out. And then this is a lantern style. This is how you would set your tool height. It's a little little rocker, little wedge. Uh, that's kind of a tedious way to do it. And and uh, if if we do get this back in the service, uh, this will be upgraded with a quick change, more modern Loris style uh, quick change uh, tool tool post. But there's our wedge, there's our cup, there's our lantern, and the uh, our guide plate, and the tool itself. And I try to keep all my parts grouped kind of together. Um, so now we'll turn our attention to our compound. Ooh. And I'm just going to break these nuts free so that I can turn it and kind of stay out of the camera's way. Ugh. Nope, still not loose enough to turn it. There we go. Uh, so this does have um, a gib, and that's what controls all the play in here. And that's adjustable with these three screws. Uh, so we'll pop these guys out um, and really, bef yeah, we can do that. Well, what we'll do is we can disassemble our handle, then we'll pop these out, then we can flip it up, knock the gib out, and uh, get that bolt on the bottom. Uh, so the way this handle comes out is there's our little locking screw we need to remove that and then there's a little set screw for the handle uh, I don't have, yes I do, right there so we'll remove that allen head screw and then we'll remove that one was actually pretty good the screw for our handle. And then that should come right off. Our dial should come right off. And then we have this bushing. Let's see what this is about. That's kind of interesting. That's keyed. Um, but it's normally the key, there's a, you'll have your your keyway cut on both pieces and the bushing will slip over the key. This actually goes down through the key um, through through that bushing. That's kind of interesting. Let's see if we can see how we're going to do this. You shouldn't use your screwdriver as a punch, but there we go. We got it to lift up, so be careful of that. Yeah, and then we can remove our bushing and that's it from the top as far as that goes. Now we'll get our gib 
out of the air. That's probably all our chatter that we had when it was growling. Those weren't very tight at all. And then I need a little punch. And that gib is right down here. Yep, and we can just push that out. That's kind of good. Remember how this goes in. Uh, typically, like on this, it can only go in one way. So that's kind of nice. Uh, but you'll notice we still can't take it off. We can move it back and forth, but it still won't come off. So we have to do is carefully flip our slide upside down and you'll see we have this bolt right here and that bolt is going to go into that uh, lead screw bushing. I don't, do I have an extension around here? I probably don't. Well it might be able to get in there now. Yep, yep, let's go the right way. There. You want to be careful when you have to do that. Make sure you don't miss because some of these are pretty sharp corners. Slice your hand open. Get that loosened up enough to where we can get this out of there. Set that aside and then we should be able to Yep, there we go. Came right off. And that's that bushing. And you can see this one is cast. Um, I would much prefer a brass or bronze because that will wear before the screw does. But we're going to get that wound out as much as we can. There's got to be a pin in here. Either that or that's pressed on. Okay, and so to get the lead screw out, um, this, this, uh, this piece right here has to come out. And my, my first uh, inclination on this was a press fit, but then I saw this little hole right here and I got thinking, I don't know if you can uh, see that. There's a little hole right there. So I have an oiler here and a hole here. And that looks uh, suspiciously like it's meant for like a spanner wrench. Um, so I soaked this, sprayed some WD-40 down here. Sprayed some WD-40 in there. Uh, give that a good crack and that unwinds just like that and then we can and that should come off this shaft which I'll probably have to just press that out um, but this is that this is that nut that I was talking about. And these get wear and that's what causes all that uh, backlash. And it, it is loose. And so what we'll do is I'll see if I can find one of these and if I can't then uh, we'll just make this out of brass be the best thing to do. Uh, that way the nut will wear and not our lead screw. So let me go ahead and get this uh, punt, uh, pressed out. That should be pretty simple. We'll just go over here to my old bench vise. This is old, old, old bench vise right here. This is, this is uh, 18 or 18 or excuse me, 1920s or so. Really nice little bench vise. Just use my brass punch. Drive the lead screw out. And we can set that aside. We can set our nut and our compound aside. And then 
on this these are all sometimes very different we can keep loosening these up until it just comes off the bolts and then we'll know how it goes together I wouldn't think that's how it would be but you never know Well, that might be how it comes apart. Either that or it's missing parts. Okay. So that's how that comes apart. There's no set screws or not. I know on some uh, machines they have a dovetail down in here. Uh, this doesn't. This You can still see the hand scrape marks on that. Uh, but that doesn't. You just pick it up and unscrew it until it comes out or I guess you could drop it down through the bottom um, but anyway there's our our compound so we'll set him there and then this is going to hold our, our uh, lead screw nut in so we're going to go ahead and get him out and then we'll pull all everything off the taper attachment and that is brass I can see the threads from here we'll get our our gib no oh, those are tight our adjustment screws for the gib done Ugh. quite a few of those and you can see we're starting to get some wobble in there now I don't know if my little uh, Ah, that's interesting. So those are actually screws with lock nuts. They've been so frozen, they've just come right out. So we'll get the impact driver on that. See if we can get this guy in there. I'm probably going to need a wrench. Nope. So we'll get our impact wrench give that a couple cracks and see if we can't get that loosened up all right get the big hammer there we go just a little bit of rust in there get that broke free actually I'll put that nut on there so I don't lose it and then get all this pulled off hopefully these will come out we'll probably have to oh yeah we'll keep going with the impact driver it's just the best best plan of action so we don't break anything This is all for the taper attachment. It's missing a bunch of a bunch of parts. But be careful of that little spring. I'm going to set him right there. He's like a little AR spring. Look at that on the sear. He's got the fat end that locks down, and then the skinny end. That's kind of neat. A little screwdriver to wind that out. Okay, so now we can get him flipped over and we got a couple of jam nuts on one end. Right back here we'll get these done and then this uh, 
guide can slide right off. That'll free up our lead screw. Um, and then we should be able to take the handle apart. And that's probably very similar to our compound. Uh, yep, set screw, washer, probably be the same keyway. Our dial, and then I bet this will unthread. You'll probably be a few extra parts because we have we have this gear here. Um, but then we can pull all that out, and then we'll we'll dis finish disassembling the. Uh, there's our gib. We can slide that out right now since that's loose. Uh, again, kind of pay attention to the way these go in. This can only go in one way, so I think we're pretty good there. Um, but let's get after these jam nuts. Well, it locks right down on the end. There we go. Just filthy, 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 dirty. Now we should be able to, no, nope, not quite yet, should be able to just put a wrench on that, spin it right off, just like so. Don't lose our spring. And then our little brass guide comes out. And uh, we're getting pretty close. We can separate our top. And then from there we can just let our little T-nuts fall down. Put the nuts on there so we don't lose them. And uh, looks looks pretty good. We'll get it cleaned up. That's for sure. There's a couple. Looks like there's supposed to be some oilers up here somewhere. Oh, there, no more taper attachment. As I was looking at it, it had these little guide pins right here that I was seeing. And I was thinking, huh, I wonder if they're just clogged with dirt, but they're guide pins. That's kind of neat. And then we'll get our primer can and stick that there. So again, we're going to remove our locking screw. Set him right there. Remove our... Oh, he's on there too. Golly. Yep, so we'll get our our impact driver. We can get that spun down so it doesn't move anymore. There we go. It's there we go. I say it's kind of turning. I'm going to keep turning it until it really breaks free, but we got it. And I don't believe this is original to the machine either. This is just a machine screw with a washer. Okay, so to get our handle off, we got another set screw. So we'll get the set screw out. Pull the handle off, we can pull our collar off. We gotta watch the parts now. Yep, same thing, keyway and everything right there. So we got that out. 
Set all this stuff right over there. Now this has actually got a spot where we can put a wrench. There we go. That one was easy to figure out. All right, so now Well, we can take that right out that way. That's kind of neat design. So this is keyed. There's a keyway in there and a locking screw and that locking screw couldn't have been very tight for it to come out like that. But you can see this. Look at how worn. There's all our backlash right there. Yeah, and they even even this this is really really worn. I'll show you that. We'll get this off and I'll show you how to look at those. So this is the same. You would look at this. So you would look at this the same way uh, you would look at your lead screw. You want to look at the thickness of the threads, and you can see we're pretty thick right up here. But then when we get down here, we're several thousandths thinner. Um, so I'm going to have to try try to find one of these or, or uh, make one um, that that's a pretty that'd be a pretty fun one to make that's that's a that's got some that's a lot of components we have to cut the keyway thread it have a shoulder here a shoulder here that'd be neat that'd, that'd take a little while hopefully we can find one Okay, so we'll uh, get this put together just so we don't lose anything. That's about all I need to put together. And then, what do we got left? We've got our... Uh, there'll be some felt in here to clean the ways. We'll pop those caps off and I think that's about it guys. That's probably plenty. And these shouldn't be that tight at all. Like all you, it's just a brass cover. And I'll show you this in a minute. Is the, these are the, um, they're a little different design on like the south bands, but it's the same idea. And this is how they kept everything clean and oiled. And these will probably have to be replaced. And what I'll do is we'll get the felt out of there and then screw it back together so we don't lose these little screws. But what it is, is this is supposed to be uh, felt. And it absorbs oil. And that's what uh, keeps the chips out from underneath the saddle to prevent excess wearing um, and they need to be replaced from time to time uh, these are these are pretty these are pretty hard and packed so I think I think we'll go ahead and just replace them they shouldn't be too bad to uh, make if we have to Okay, so all I did was um, I just pulled all the felt out of these little uh, keepers and then um, I screwed them all back in so I wouldn't lose them. I got enough little parts. And I think that's about it. Well, everyone, that's about as far as I'm going to go today on the uh, Sheldon. That's plenty of parts to keep track of. Uh, I hope you're enjoying this series. This is this is really fun for me uh, because this is uh, so far quite a bit different from uh, most lathes that that I've worked on. There's a lot of similarities, but there's uh, just as many neat little variations. And uh, just in case you're wondering why the Sheldon is pushed up against the wall, here it is. Uh, this just came into the shop. Uh, really last week 
um, and just because of everything that's going on here, um, I'm plumb out of room in here. This this little area that everything's in is uh, 12 by 16, and it's pretty full. So the the Sheldon got moved up against the wall, uh, so I could kind of go through this. Um, this is a uh, South Bend 10L uh, bench bench model precision lathe. We'll go into its history and and everything uh, pretty pretty soon. This is pretty. This is a nice lathe. This is probably one of the most sought after lathes in the country. Um, so really really looking forward to diving into this. Uh, same thing. 1943 war production model. Um, this one didn't see any battlefield action or anything like that. It was uh, used by the Air Force. Um, I haven't dug in too far to see what base it was at, but uh, this one's in really, like, it's in workable condition. It's just uh, needs a rejuvenation. Um, so we'll see how that, and, and a motor. Um, so we'll see how that goes. So, so stay tuned for that. That won't be that far down the road, as well as some other, other interesting projects that I have coming up. So uh, again, don't forget to hit that uh, like and subscribe button. Um, and until next time, we'll see y'all.